One of the biggest lies in the EV industry is regenerative braking. It's great for saving brake pads, it's good for slowing you down, but what it doesn't do is give you more range. Let's get into it. Hey, I'm Ben and I've been riding electric motorcycles for about 60,000 miles an hour over the last four years. And in that time, I've learned a few things about how to get the most out of these bikes. And in today's video, I want to clarify what regenerative braking really is, how to use it, and how to really get the most miles out of your bike when you're using regenerative braking. What is regenerative braking? Well, we're taking energy that we're already expending and we're putting it back into the battery. That's the most simplistic and basic way to describe it. But really what we're doing is using the most of the motor to slow down the bike and that the slowing the turning of that motor is what's creating energy that's being sent back into the bike misconception that people have with regen braking is that it's like this infinite source of regen like it's going to give you tens and, and hundreds of miles back into the battery and that's that is not true at all so in a way we have to spend energy to get energy back uh, if it's used in the wrong situation it's actually going to cost you more energy than it does saving any energy you really have to use it in the right situation in order to take the most advantage out of out of using it when you ride. Let's go and throw two minutes on the clock and let's talk about regen braking. Is an appropriate term. I think the appropriate term for this kind of braking would be like bucket catch <laughs> braking. Because really what you want to do to use regenerative braking the proper way is you want to catch wasted energy. You want to catch energy that is already going to be wasted. And when does that happen? When you have to stop the bike. That's the only time that regen braking is going to be beneficial for you because again, you have to stop. If you're going downhill, and again, if it's a very steep hill and you need to slow down, meaning I would already be going to grab the brake, that's whenever I would use regen. On my bike, I have two custom profiles, A and B. Profile A, everything is set to zero. Zero throttle, zero power and zero regen. On custom mode B, I have the exact same power and acceleration settings, except I have regen turned completely off. So that's like my coasting profile. And on the Live R1, I can turn off all the other manufacturer riding profiles and I can have just A and just B. And what that means is, is whenever I want to have regen or if I want to, when I want to coast on demand and I don't have to worry about having my hand on the throttle, I tap the mode button, it switches to my other profile and it's almost like, it's like having an on and off button for regen whenever I want it. So on the Live R1, they have a really handy gauge that lets you know what your, your power output is and what your regen input is. So as it turns green, that means that I'm regenerating energy, I'm, I'm catching the energy as I'm going downhill, and then the orange is as I'm spending energy. This mountain, it's, it's a really decent steep slope, so I could probably regen brake the entire way down for the most part without having to really worry about consuming energy. Now my goal should be to not use throttle at all when I'm going down because again now I'm taking out what I just put in. So if I'm going too slow now, I'm going to hit my mode button, I'm going to switch profiles and so now I'm just coasting. Now I'm using no energy whatsoever. I'm building up momentum, I'm building up energy and now that I want to slow down, I tap my mode button again, it turns on my regen, I slow down, I tap it, now I'm gonna now I'm letting gravity build up the energy for me. So the, the key to wasting the least amount of energy to slow down the least amount possible or the least amount that's needed in order to maintain momentum. We want to maintain mo constant momentum as best as we can. Cruise control, timing stoplights so that you don't have to stop at the stoplight. Maybe as soon as you see the stoplight, you start slowing down, you start coasting in the hopes that you can time it. So instead of there being a huge dip in energy loss, now there's just a little one and that's less energy that we have to recoup to get us back up to speed. I hope this makes sense. This is the technique that I use in pretty much all of my long distance travels that I do. So how can you apply this on your rides? Well, go to your bike, set up some custom profiles, or if you can, turn regen all the way off and ride a route that you normally ride with regen on. Try to, try to ride the same way, the same speed, stop at the same places, and see if you get better range, and let me know in the comments if it worked out for you. If you found this video helpful, make sure you give it a like. If you wanna see the next video, make sure you subscribe, and I'll see you next Tuesday.